If there are people that depending upon they didn't do too much bad but they didn't have belief, what happens to their souls they walk upon this earth. Once they've been freed from their body they live upon this earth and they roam the earth with the fragrance of their light. One their light is of a stench, it was not purified. The mildew and the bad actions of their character fragranced their light and made their arwah to be of a not pleasant smell. Based on what they know is where they levitated to. So if they didn't know of God, they didn't know of Allah they didn't know of paradises and heavens and the Prophets and they had not that belief, they're stuck within a realm of what they believed. And they believed in the material world and they're stuck on this material world. They roam and we've described before they roam the earth and one form of azab before a greater azab, one form of difficulty before a greater difficulty is to roam the earth without the ability to intervene. To be a spectator in your own life and the life of those whom you loved is a punishment. They're free from the punishment of the grave, they begin to what they call like ghosts, they roam the earth. And then somebody came and said, there's no ghost in Islam, I said, what are you talking about? There's ghosts in Islam, there's jinn in Islam, there's everything in Islam. <laughs> Because Allah has created, He says, that which you know and that which you don't know. So since you don't know it, you say, no, it doesn't have it in Islam because of arrogance of character. Characters that are arrogant, they limit Allah's creation, limit knowledges that Allah dispenses. If you don't know it, you're not from that reality. And if you are from that rea reality, Allah teaches you. So those whom they've trained in Malakut and their seclusions, all they've dealt with is unseen. And the reality of death is that they freed from temporary punishment, Allah allows them to roam the earth. As they roam the earth they levitate to where they were familiar with, homes and relatives of where they used to be. That's why in some places they're stuck in buildings places where they lived, homes where they lived, locations where they occupied. That's all that's familiar to them. They didn't think of, I'm going to go to this maqam or that maqam and I want to be with these pious people. And that's why one of the realities of what Prophet was teaching, seek out knowledges. Because the knowledge is power and the knowledge will set you free. Beyond your imagination of the dunya, that when you seek out these realities it's knowledge and it's understanding sets us free. One we said every death is at night, as soon as you wash and sleep it's a death for you. Your body parked, your soul went and said, I heard these realities Ya Rabbi. And that's why they speak to the level of the soul not to the physicality. One so that everyone's souls who will listen now or in the future or whenever they listen to it. They sleep with wudu and their soul will go into it and say, Ya Rabbi I heard about ta'aseen, let me to be dressed in that ocean of ta'aseen, of ya'aseen, of all these haqqaiqs and all these teachings, Ya Rabbi let me to be dressed in it. So the seeking of knowledge is the most immense dress upon the soul. It frees the soul and opens its infinite maqams and stations for the soul to achieve of haqqaiqs and realities. But for us to understand the dunya when somebody doesn't have that, they roam the earth. There are souls that roam the earth and they go to their loved ones and then they begin to witness what's happening. Somebody's abusing somebody and they can't say anything. Somebody's putting somebody into difficulty, they can't say anything. Somebody's harming all of the things you could imagine that people do to each other. Imagine these souls are watching, they watch in the homes.
because they levitate to those locations and they want to see what's going on, they want to be with their loved ones. They can't communicate with them because the pardon, the division that Allah has drawn between them. So means then we understand this is an immense difficulty. They see the hardships, they see the difficulties, they see the sadness and everything that humanity inflicts upon each other and they can't do anything. And that's why they show in all of these things that these souls are trying to find people that can do something. They try to find the souls that have a subtle nature, that they want to communicate with those souls that, you have a subtle nature, you have an ability, you can see us, we want you to help us. That's why sometimes somebody may have a spiritual opening and begin to have too many dreams of dead people coming to them, trying to talk to them, trying to chat with them. Because this station of these people, their souls that are trapped onto this earth and didn't achieve what Allah wanted them to achieve, they need a means of communication. They're not able to communicate with the living and they're stuck in the world of death. Means then the reality of opening our souls and opening the reality of lights are immense. When the shaykhs are trained and Allah open their lights, open their realities, their souls can communicate with the world of light, can give their isharat and their guidance to those souls and does dawah to these souls that if you want guidance from us and you want information from us, come take your shahada. Live a life of service, start doing your zikr, give your soul to the reality of the Muhammadan reality means now commit yourself to a higher learning and a higher reality of Allah and Allah begin to dress these souls, bless these souls. The power that emanates from the shaykh or not from the 10 people or 15 people or 30 people around him but from the thousands of souls that are collecting around him or her. It's not from the seen, it's from the unseen power. That Allah's rahmah is so immense that these are not people that have been tied into punishment but their punishment is that they roam the earth in millions, even billions of souls. How many souls are here from the beginning of time? And if they didn't achieve what they were supposed to achieve on this earth, Allah's infinite rahmah is then roam until you find guidance. And there can be no guidance except from Allah And He even guides the dead, that they'll be guided to these awliyaullah, they'll be guided to the associations and the zikrs because they see its lights. They see the light of what's happening in these associations and they come. And they can hear them the awliya, they come and say, oh look them they're the Abdullahs because <laughs> they come from a completely different background. And they deal with them and they teach them that if you want our way we're not going to do anything for you but you have to come to accept Islam and you have to come and accept and do your practices. If you do your practices your light will be magnified. Allah will give the darajat of your light that you are seeking of that realities. And what we achieve in this dunya of light and of blessings is so immense that if you achieve these lights they communicate with those who passed and those whom are living. If you die in a state of belief Allah frees your soul with immense lights. These immense lights can deal with their families, can deal with all their loved ones. They intercede for them, they intercede on every type of difficulty that's coming towards them. Allah with Azzat Allah, with the permission of Allah and the permission of Sayyidina Muhammad these souls are of service. That's why we started with paradise is closed. When they're good and they reach the goodness Allah frees them, go. As soon as they go to their loved ones, they see them in difficulty, the soul is in that home praying, Ya Rabbi please they're in difficult condition. You accepted to, to free me and, and granted me this light, now save them, 
free them from difficulty, from hardship that I'm seeing upon them and they are of a minor intercession at all times. We have loved ones all around us praying for us. Those whom were pious and Allah gave them of lights, gave them of these realities, they live a life of service. That's why we described before, seek out these pious people. In these countries that there's maqams, imagine you're not talking now regular, you're talking somebody who reached maybe sainthood in their life. When they die, they die with the full Muhammadan light upon their soul, they're like immense suns on this earth. Just moving towards their maqam every difficulty will be burned away. Of the immensity of light, make maqams, go to the maqams, make salawats. This is a Muhammadan reality as a rahman, a mercy upon this earth. Every type of mushkilat to be cleared and to be taken by that light and blessed by that light. <coughs> what they deposit of their secret into your soul. You think you go into these lights and you empty and you come back yourself? You've entered into paradise, nobody who goes to paradise ever comes back to earth. It's the rule of paradise. So our lives where we went travelling to all these maqams, why? So that our, our arwa and our soul stays with them. They dress it, they bless it, they give it its zikr. They give it the secrets that Allah wanted to give to it and those secrets are dressing and blessing us. They're like an in investment you would call like annuities. You made good investments and they start to pay you royalties and it's the royalties of these awliya. Wherever we went in our lives and travelled and maqams, imagine the best of maqams, Madina to Munawwara. Prophet is not giving immense royalties. Every tajalli that comes from Atiyullah, Atiyah Rasul. Wa ulul amri minkum is immediately then dispersed to all those whom are in the arwa and the lights of Prophet That was the greatest and that's why all these Nat Sharif is the Medina, Medina. It was the, the headquarters of all reality and all lights. And those that can't go, they can go with their salawats. As soon as they make salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad their arwa will be freed and sent into that presence. So it means our life is all about the world of light. When we're making our madad, when we're making our zikrs, when we're making our practices, you're building the world of light around you. So when somebody says, what should I be doing? You should be making your madad. You should be reciting the madad all the time in your home. You should be making your home like a maqam in which it has dalal khirat continuously playing. You should have all of these spiritual practices, why? So that you bring the positive lights within your home. You bring the souls of pious people around your home to pray, to bring their lights there. As they bring their lights there it attracts the lights of all these souls that want guidance. And it becomes like a maqam because these pious people their lights will be there teaching these souls. They see it like a star on a dark night. Imagine this world where there's no more spirituality and everybody's relying on their phones, there's nothing. And then there's a home where somebody believes and believes correctly with the love of Prophet building their soul, their home becomes like a star on a dark night. And these lost souls they see that as an oasis, they see it as an oasis in darkness where all they see around them now is darkness. They see a light coming and they want to know what these Abdullahs are doing. And they come and they enter into guidance and Allah guide them, why? For the benefit of me and you because if they come into guidance they have no nafs. If they come into Allah's satisfaction their lights grow at a speed that not understood by us. There's no more nafs on them. When they do zikr they do zikr with all its haqqaiq and all its realities. These souls become an immense light around us and around our families and around our communities. So means this world of light is not something that we can imagine. But when you follow the prescription of these awliyaullah on how to interact, how to keep your adab of your home, how to keep the zikr playing within your home, how to fragrance and make everything beautific for the pious souls. If the pious souls come they attract all these souls and your home become a center of da'wah. Some who can hear can hear their teaching when you're asleep. 
because there's they're on and off hours, there's no off hours for the soul. The soul doesn't sleep, only your physicality sleeps. If the shaykh is in your home teaching, he's teaching all the souls in that association and the teaching never ends, their job never ends. The world of light is at a continuous state, only the physicality rests. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of the world of light, the world of souls and that how these souls roam the earth, the fragrance that they have and how quickly they can change from badness and dirtiness to beautific fragrances and lights because there's no more nafs on them. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.